Good afternoon, friends. We welcome you to another meeting of the Potter's House online. As most of you will know, the Potter's House is the ministry of Lurgan Elam Church for the over 50s. And uh, we usually enjoy meeting once a month in the church for a time of fellowship and encouragement and praise. Unfortunately, in these days, we can't meet in that usual way. And so we have substituted these little gatherings online. And we found them to be a source of encouragement and blessing. Now, our guest speaker today is Pastor Sam McClurg, who is the minister of the Elam Pentecostal Church in Rathfryland. And we're so grateful to him for taking time to prepare something to say to us today to encourage and challenge our hearts at this time. And I know you'll be blessed by what you hear today. I want to say a word of thanks also to Paula Woods and the others who are involved in putting these meetings out on the internet. We appreciate their help very much indeed. And above all, of course, we give thanks to God for his unfailing goodness and grace toward us. In these dark and unusual days, how often we have been encouraged and uplifted by the sense of our Saviour's presence. So before we turn to Pastor McClurg, let's have a word of prayer together. And if you have a particular need, either relating to yourself or to do with your family or circle of friends, I would encourage you that as I pray audibly, that you pray quietly in your heart, wherever you are, bringing that need before the Lord and believing that he is able to help and bless and undertake in every situation. Let's pray. Our gracious and loving Father, we Come before your throne of grace today in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that as we listen to the ministry of your word today, we may be encouraged and strengthened and uplifted. If there are those who are listening this afternoon who are facing particular problems, perhaps battling with illness, or facing many of the other troubles that afflict us in this earthly life. I pray that as they look to you, as they call upon you, they will find in you the help and the strength that they need. We thank you, Lord, for your abundant goodness to us. Even in dark and strange days, we know that you are there with us. For you've promised never to leave us or forsake us. Bless our fellowship together, we pray. And have your hand upon your servant as he ministers to us. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' worthy name. Amen. Friends, we now hand over to Pastor McClurg. Well, good afternoon, folks, and may I just say thank you to Pastor Stephen Hilliard for inviting me to share with you today um, some thoughts um, and devotion. And I've entitled this um, Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. You know, the most important thing that we can do in these days to which we live is to run in and to him. I want to read so do from Matthew chapter 12 and it's from verse 19. Talking about Jesus it says, He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering 
wick. He will not snuff out, as another translation puts it. Do you know, the wonderful thing about the Lord Jesus Christ is how he handles people, how he treats people. You see, it's not just a simple fact of looking to what Jesus says. Do you know, it's what he does and how he does it that is significant. And so today I want to talk about that, about running to him. Because he is the one that does not break a bruised reed, nor snuff out a smouldering flax. And why would something be bruised? Well, something would be bruised because it's been hit. And when you when you get hit later, there is a bruise. I want to talk today to people who have taken a hit. There's been a hit on your health. This pandemic has maybe taken a hit also on your mental health. A hit on your family. There's situations that have never been there before. And it's so difficult. Talking about people who have taken a hit because... You haven't seen your family. You've been maybe shielding and you haven't been able to see them and they haven't been able to see you. And that has been a great hit that you have had to take on board. Maybe a hit in your business. Maybe a hit thinking of the future. You're worried so you are. You're thinking of your kids and maybe your grandkids and what their future holds and your own future holds as well. Maybe there's sickness in your body. And you're worried because of all what's happening with the NHS and the difficulties there. And it's a hit that you're under. Likewise also, um, reeds are, would break because of the pressure that they are under. They are flattened, as it were, by the pressure from above. And this is the pressure that you have been feeling. The pressure that you have been under listen today i want to encourage you run to jesus run to jesus he's the one who loves you and he's the one that we have just read a bruised reed he will not break our smoke green flax he will not snuff out joe maybe you've taken a hit because you see an empty chair this past year, someone that you love, maybe a loved one, a friend, and they're no longer there and it's a hard hit for you to endure. Do you know, I want you to know that Jesus understands what you're going through. He knows how you feel. He took many hits while he was on this earth. You know, the Bible says in uh, Hebrews 4 and verse 15, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Listen, he knows what it's like. The hits and the pressure that you have been under. And run to him. I want to talk about that smoking flax because you see, the smouldering elm. Why does a fire go out? A fire would go out. It would start to smoulder because of two things. Number one, a lack of oxygen. Or number two, a lack of fuel. If you have a fire, if one of the things that you try to do is to suffocate it, a fire blanket, all the water, all the rest, these things to try to suffocate the oxygen from it. Likewise, fuel. A fire will burn out if there's a lack of fuel. We all know that in a coal fire. It all burns out because there's a lack of fuel. You need to add to the fuel. And maybe today, your flame has been going out. Maybe your flame has been almost like as if it snuffed out. Do you know, I think of a song by Keith Green. Maybe you remember it. My eyes are dry, my faith is old, my heart is hard, my prayers are cold, and I know how I ought to be, alive to you and dead to me. But what can be done 
for an old heart like mine, soften it up with oil and wine. The oil is you, the spirit of love. Please wash me in you in the wine of your blood. Maybe Christian today, that's been your experience. This experience of separation has affected you and that's now even in a stage where the fires are low in your heart. You're not the way you should be and you know that to be the case. And you know, it's an interesting thing, human nature. Whenever there's a situation or maybe a problem, one of the things that human nature is does is we try to hide it. Kids, when they've done something wrong, they try to hide it so that nobody can see. Thing is, people, parents know, are able to see and suss it out. When people get older and they feel something not necessarily right in their body, one of the human nature's tendencies is to try to ignore, try to push it under the carpet, as it were, to try to not acknowledge it or to run away from it. Listen, obviously in these days, if there's anything that's untoward, don't bury your head in the sand. Seek medical advice and get that situation sorted out. But crucially, we are the same with the Lord. Instead of trying to sort it out, we have a tendency to try to ignore it or try to run from it. Think of Jonah. God called him and he ran the completely the opposite way. You think of the kings with the prophets, Elijah, always speaking to Ahab. And he told him, look, you know, these are problems. And Ahab just ignored them and ignored uh, Elisha, uh, sorry, Elijah. Listen today. Your heart is not the way it should be. Run to Jesus. Don't try and hide from him. Don't try and stay away from him. Run to him because he loves you and he is there for you. And he's the one that can turn a situation around. He's the one that even though your heart may be like a, a smoky flax, it's about to go out. He won't let that be so. Listen, maybe you've been flattened by the pressures and the hits that you have taken. And you feel that you're just about to break. You're about to give up. Listen, Jesus won't let you give up. Jesus will never give up on you. Maybe you are someone and you feel as if the fires have gone and you're about to be snuffed out and you feel that's it. But listen, Jesus is not going to let you go. Because he said, Of them that you have given me, I have lost none. And he loses none. He runs after the lost sheep. And leaves a 99 to bring that lost one home. He is wonderful. Jesus is who you need. And listen today. I want to give you some examples. Of how he treats people. So that you can see. How he treats those who are a smoking flax. Or a bruised reed. And do you know one of the first ones we want to look at is. In Matthew, or sorry, Mark chapter 5. It's those two women, one age 12 and the other 12 years dealing with an issue of blood. And that woman with the issue of blood, her faith was not right. It just wasn't right. You know, she said in Mark 5 and verse 28, If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. She said to herself, all I need to do is touch his clothes. Now listen, there's absolutely no healing virtue in the clothes of Jesus. That is superstition. And her faith was superstitious. And she came to Jesus this way. But notice how Jesus treated her. Notice what happened. But let me just first say, 
There is no healing virtue in those clothes. Think of the four soldiers around the cross. They handled the clothes of Jesus. They gambled for the clothes of Jesus. And do you read of them receiving any healing touch? Do you receive, hear of them any miracle happening to them on the cross? No. Because there's no healing virtue in clothes. Do you know, that is superstitious. And indeed, there are those today who have a superstitious faith, believing in the likes of relics, and they touch relics, believing they're going to receive a miracle, a blessing. There is absolutely no healing virtue in any of those things. And you see, this is the reason why I believe Jesus done what he done in that instance. Because if you remember, he's, Jesus stopped and he turned around and he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, look, everybody's touching you. But you see, Jesus was drawing that woman out because he knew that healing virtue left him. And he was drawing that woman out and he said to that woman, thy faith has made you whole. You see, Jesus was not only interested in touching her body and making her well. He was interested in her bruised faith. Because her faith was bruised. It was not right. It wasn't correct. But he knew that. But he wasn't going to break that and say, no, sorry, this is not good enough. He took her bruised faith. And he healed her. And then... He saved her. Your faith has made you. He stopped and he got that woman to confess. Confess what she, her faith in Jesus. Confess then who Jesus was. Bible says in Romans. For with the mouth confession. Heart man believes on the righteousness. But with the mouth confession is made on the salvation. He perfected her faith. Maybe today your faith is not right. Maybe you have been living here in superstition for so many years. Listen, Jesus comes to you and bids you come to him and be made whole. His faith will change you because he loves you. The second woman was that woman who was 12 years old and she died. That Jairus' daughter, very sad. But I want that something that at the end of that chapter in Mark 5 and verse 43. And it says that Jesus then, after he had healed her and brought her back to life, he said to her parents, now give her something to eat. Now give her something to eat. Now that is fantastic. That is fantastic because that tells me how intimately Jesus knows you and me. Pastor, do you think that if that kid had not got her food, that she was going to die immediately? Absolutely not. But you see, Jesus knows human nature. He knew that that family would be rejoicing as you would be rejoicing, as I would be rejoicing. And therefore then the needs of the child because would be forgotten about. Because remember, this child was likely ill for a long time. And therefore then, maybe for days, that child had not eaten. And a child was starving. And Jesus knew it. And he says, give her something to eat. Because in the hours that would have passed, they would have forgotten the needs of that child. And that child would have went hungry. And would have no one to speak to to get sorted you see that tells you and me something he intimately knows your needs you don't even need to explain to him because he knows yes we have heard the verses are not the hers on your head numbered and yes we joke around and say well for some the Lord doesn't have a hard job there's not so much her there, but listen to me, all joking aside. He knew intimately this child needed food. He knows what you need. 
he knows and notice how he handles that situation and how, that is how he will treat you because he knows what you need run to him run to him i want to speak now chapter mark chapter 9 there is a father who has a great need his child is a great need and he comes to jesus for that need to be met and unfortunately at that moment in time jesus is up in the mountain of transfiguration and so he meets the disciples who are at the bottom and he comes to them and the disciples can't help they can't do what this man wants them to do for his son and so in that moment what happens is then that the that father leaves disappointed because of the disciples he leaves disappointed because of the disciples i want to talk today to people who have left because they've been left disappointed because of the disciples because of church things have happened and you've got hurt things have happened and situations have occurred and listen i put my own hands up we are only human and we can make mistakes but importantly if we know if i know if i've made a mistake i go to that person and i apologize it's important to do that but i want to talk to people who have been hurt by church and therefore then you've walked away i want to talk to you run to jesus this man was disappointed with the disciples but jesus loved him and loved him enough to meet him where he was you know the story he comes down off the mountain he asks the father what's wrong he gets a story about the situation and you know jesus says to him if you can believe all things are possible wonderful and then that man makes an honest statement to jesus and he says in verse 24 of mark 9 lord i believe help my own belief he had doubts and then those doubts he was struggling but what did jesus do sorry you don't have enough faith for to be healed do you know sometimes i've heard that of people who come for healing and pray and receive prayer and then they're told sorry your faith is not enough as or maybe the impression is given that's the case listen to me today this man didn't have enough faith lord i believe but help my own belief there was doubts did jesus reject him did jesus say sorry wait to the back of the line until you gather more faith no jesus took him doubts and all and done a wonderful miracle in his family's life and turned the situation around because what he had was before him a bruised reed a smoking a smoldering um about to go out and instead of letting it go out because he is there he had faith but he had doubts jesus healed his boy and turned the situation around listen today have you got doubts that's okay that's okay do you know it's interesting in matthew chapter 28 and verse 17 as jesus is about to ascend up to heaven the bible says in that verse that they worshipped him and some doubted in that moment there was doubts doubts i'm sure about jesus doubts about the future what's going to happen when jesus is away are we able to do this all of these things but listen they had them and they came to jesus with them and you come to jesus you run to jesus run to him with your doubts run to him with your fears run to him with your concerns because he will not turn you away he will turn your situation around and do great and wonderful things he knows where you are he knows the fragility of where you are and he is the one a bruised reed he will not break and a smoking flax he will not snuff out 
listen Jesus loves you I think also of Peter think of Peter that disciple who feels Jesus maybe you feel Jesus I'm talking today to Christians and the field maybe you feel recently maybe you feel in the past and you've lived with that guilt and the shame of it do you know Peter denied Jesus three times I think it's Luke's gospel that says on that time when the rooster crowed that third time that the Lord turned and looked on Peter and Peter went out and wept bitterly but you know the end of the story the angel goes on the day of resurrection and tells the women go tell my disciples and Peter why because Jesus loves him and he's a smoking he's a smoking flax he's a bruised reed but Jesus loves him and he's not going to let him down he's going to turn him around why not because Jude 24 now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and Peter had fell but listen the Lord was there to lift him up and the Lord's here to lift you up yes you failed him and listen we're we're all human we all make mistakes the bible says in proverbs a righteous man falls seven times a day but he gets back up again but this bruised reed of peter he was not going to let break he's not going to snuff him out because he loved him and he loves you so run to jesus with your doubts run to him with your failures and cast all your care upon him for he cares for you and as a close there's a verse in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 and it says this he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities our Lord Jesus Christ was bruised the Hebrew word is crushed for our iniquities. Am I speaking to someone today and you're not saved? Maybe you're a backslider. Jesus was bruised. He was crushed for your sin. On the cross at Calvary, Jesus took your sin and mine and he paid for it all. That wonderful cry from the cross, it is finished and so it was the debt of sin was paid and the door is open for you to receive Christ and to be saved all because he was bruised and you see he understands people who are bruised because he was bruised bruised with life bruised of the world bruised of sin come to him with your sin call upon the name of the Lord for mercy and you will receive mercy because he is the one that doesn't turn away the bruised reed he will not break the smoking flax he will not snuff out receive Christ run to Christ he is all that you need. May God bless you today. Amen. Well, friends, we say thank you to Pastor Sam McClurg for his ministry to us today. And I know that what he has had to say will be a source of blessing to each and every one of us. I pray that God will continue to have his good hand upon you in the days to come. I'd like to let you know that in two weeks' time, our next Potter's House Online will feature Peter and Roberta Somerville, who will be ministering God's Word and also sharing something of Roberta's testimony to God's help and blessing on her life during her recent heart transplant surgery. We will also be enjoying some musical ministry from Paul Silcock. We look forward to seeing you in two weeks' time. The Lord bless each one of you. Goodbye.